Hello everybody. Curriculum for young children. Under this, we are going to deal with the lesson Principles of Teaching and Learning in Early Childhood Education Programs. The objective of this lesson is to understand the early principles of learning, to understand the general and psychological principles of teaching and to understand the guidelines in planning programs for early childhood experiences. Early childhood professionals recognize the gradual shift in emphasis occurs over the first eight years of the child's life along with the continuum from play to more structured learning in formal settings. Early childhood professionals apply strategies to support sustained and shared interactions with the children through play to more focused learning. Learning as we all know is an active process that must involve the children's engagement. Play is an essential for ability to stimulate and integrate a wide range of the child's intellectual, physical, social and creative abilities. Active engagement and attainment to the children in their play extends and supports their learning. The shared sustained conversations are also powerful and important feature of the active child and adult engagement. Early childhood professionals, they encourage the child to explore, to solve problems, to communicate, to think, to create and construct. They also use their judgment to support the children's learning and development through a combination of child-led play-based learning as well as the active teacher-led learning. The early childhood professionals support us to create physical environments that support a range of opportunities for learning and physical activity both indoors and outdoors. They also build on the children's interest, abilities, the cultures and previous learning experiences to extend their thinking, learning and development. Now we will see what is the importance of early learning. The children's early learning experience have a profound effect on their development. These early interactions directly affect the way connections are made in the brain. Early learning experiences are crucial to the future well-being of the child and establish the foundation for acquiring knowledge and skills that will affect the later learning and behavior in the child. The four to five year old children, they arrive at school as unique individuals shaped by their particular culture and social backgrounds and day to day experiences and they are at different stages of development. Their early experiences with school are of paramount importance. The children will thrive within the classrooms that meet their developmental needs and that provide a secure, respectful and nurturing environment. An early learning program can meet all these needs and provide an environment conducive to learning and only if it is culturally, linguistically and developmentally appropriate. Expectations should be challenging but attainable. The learning environment needs to reflect the social and cultural context in which each child is developing. The program should be flexible enough to respond to individual differences and to make the children feel comfortable in applying their unique ways of thinking and learning. To give each child the best start possible, it is essential that early learning programs provide a variety of learning opportunities and experiences that are based on the assessment, information and the strength the needs and interest of the child. Although early learning programs are critical in laying the foundations for success in learning, the early years are also important time in the children's total development. The teachers, 
who are the early childhood educators are also the members of the community and the family should also work together to provide a challenging and engaging learning experiences to see learning as both enjoyable and useful and provide a strong foundation for the future intellectual and physical and social development of the child. So, this is the importance of early learning. Now, we will see what are the principles of early learning. The first principle is learning begins from birth. From infancy, the children are mentally and physically very active. They learn through their senses and stimulations. Children construct knowledge. They construct their own knowledge or working models while they actively engage in their environment and through repeated interaction with the people and material. This simply means that the children with touch, taste, shaking things and with communicating with the environment are able to find out what happens and they learn about the things in their own environment. The third principle is the children's curiosity and desire to learn. Children are very curious and they are very eager to learn. They have an inherent need to make the sense of their experiences and learn about the world around them. Children learn through play. Play is the center of the child's well-being and development. The children's spontaneous play provides opportunities for exploration, experimentation and manipulation and other problem solving that are essential for constructing knowledge. Child development and learning are characterized by the individual variation. No two children are same. Each child is unique and they have a individual pattern and timing of growth and development as well as individual styles of learning. The children's learning reflects a recurring spiral that begins in awareness and moves to exploration, to inquiry and finally to application. Any new learning by children begins with awareness which is generated from their experiences with the objects, with the events, with the people and ends with utilization where the children are able to use these learning in new situations. At this stage, the children start exploring the next level of information and spiral continues. Then the next principle is the children need to experience success more than failure to form a positive self concept. The experiences should be planned in accordance with the maturational level of the children such that they are challenging as well as they should be achievable or attainable. So, this promotes the positive self confidence in the child. The children develop holistically and benefit from integrated experiences and education. Learning and development of the children takes place in totality. All the domains of development that is the physical, motor, cognitive, language, socio-personal, the emotional, the creative and aesthetic appreciation, these are all interrelated and they take place simultaneously. So, we have understood the importance of early learning and the principles of early learning. Now, let us move on to see the general principles in teaching these early childhood children. A good teacher always wants her teaching to be very effective. This principle evolved to help the teacher to carry her teaching effectively. They provide her the guidelines and to keep her in the right track. They ensure the good achievement for the teacher in the process of teaching and the principles of teaching which are general in nature can be explained. The first principle is principle of definite objectives. While teaching anything, 
the teacher first should have a fixed up with some objectives or goals for that lesson then she can select a material and use the appropriate methods and then ultimately ensure the attainment of the fixed objectives the objectives may vary from subject to subject from time to time so in teaching the objectives should be fixed and then effort should be made to achieve these fixed objectives second one is principle of model presentation the teacher who presents the material while teaching should see that his or her presentation is really a model one in every way the personality of the teacher his behavior actions should be a goal or real model for the learner the learner imitate the teacher to a maximum so the teacher should present all the excellence in the life in him which is ultimately wants the learner to acquire in his life the principle of selection of material while teaching whatever material is to be presented by the teacher should be well selected it should be in accordance with the aim and objectives of the teaching and also to the mental level of the learners then only it will be digested by the children properly the principle of gradation the material which is selected should be graded properly by gradation we mean that each item will come first which item will come after and which item will be at the end while grading the material easy and simple things should come first the difficult and complicated should occur afterwards thus the placement of the material in a graded form will make the teaching learning process more effective then the principle of activity teaching learning process is a bipolar process both the teacher and the student should remain active the more the activity of the children the better the teaching process the principles of correlation a good teacher tries to correlate his teaching with the life he also tries to correlate one subject with various other subjects and also with the children are expected to learn it will make his whole studies interesting for the child then the principle of child centeredness teaching should make the child centered as far as possible that means the interest and liking of the children should be given first priority while teaching the subject matter should be meaningful for the child the principle of cooperation teaching learning is a cooperative venture for all those who are concerned the cooperation of the teacher and the taught and the head of the institution they form the basis for effective teaching principle of planning the teacher should come prepared with everything planned before entering the class they should foresee the problems and think for the best possible solutions also thus the principle of planning helps them to perform better in their duty of teaching the principle of individual differences in any group of students no two individuals are same there are always variations to their liking disliking attitudes aptitudes etc and the teacher teaching the whole group by using one and same method and dealing with everyone in the same way will fail miserably and the principle of democracy in a successful teaching democratic environment is created it is such an atmosphere where there are equal rights there is respect and regards for each individual and there is no gap between the teacher and the taught then the principle of progressivism good teaching should be progressive type a good teacher should take care of this principles with the lapse of time there is all round progress in the teacher his teaching attitudes habits and the learner his learning habits and his teaching the learning program then the next principle is principle of self reliance and self confidence 
good teaching broadens the intellectual horizons of their child they become self reliant and also self confident so these are the general principles of teaching let us now move on to see what are the psychological principles of teaching principle of motivation teaching is a tripolar process which involves the interaction of the teacher the taught and the subject matter for this cooperation between the teacher and the taught is must now the concept of teaching learning has changed it is no longer the process of teaching only it is the process where the emphasis has been shifted from the teacher to the learner the important thing is to know whether the learner cooperates whether his interest in the subject is there or not the teacher's job is to motivate the learner by creating different situations to promote the interest of the learner motivation is therefore supreme importance the children should be interested towards their surroundings the teacher therefore should provide them this type of material the children should be motivated towards the topic the teacher has to teach it is a motivation which will make them interested in that topic the environment of the class can be changed to break the monotony of the class the next principle is principle of repetition and exercise the teacher should repeat several times what he is teaching in the class so that the learner are able to grasp and understand the subject very well it also helps them to retain what is learned in their minds for a longer period of time the children need a lot of practice to become perfect in the subjects then the principle of feedback and reinforcement during teaching the teacher should try to give positive reinforcement to the students some sort of feedback helps the students to learn some things much better the knowledge of the results should also be given to the learner as quickly as possible so that the students will be knowing their drawbacks and strengths and can work on them principle of rest fatigue decreases the speed of learning there is a need to give rest after some interval period of time study followed by rest refreshes the mind and prepares the learner for more studies then comes the principle of readiness if a person is not ready to learn anything then the teaching can never take place readiness on the part of learner is very essential then the principle of fostering creativity during teaching the teacher should foster the creativity among the students he should always discourage reproduction of the material by the students in a classroom situation there are some students who cram the material and reproduce it the teacher should encourage the real creative children in the classroom then comes the principle of sympathy the teacher should possess a sympathetic attitude usually the students are afraid of teacher a good teacher should be affectionate and sympathetic and try to understand her students then the principle of self learning a good teacher encourages self learning efforts made by the students for learning anything they teach in such a way that the learner acquire the habit of self learning then the principle of group dynamics the teacher should understand group dynamics they should try to inculcate among the learner a suitable type of group behavior and then there comes the principle of providing training to senses senses play a very important role in the process of learning in fact senses are the gateway to knowledge during the process of teaching the learner should be trained for observation experimentation identification discrimination generalization etc seeing hearing and other dominating experiences are very important for the learner the teacher should provide such experiences to the learners now let us see what is a teacher's role the teacher 
almost agree with the philosophy and practices of the curriculum and understand its content. The teacher's philosophy of life, of human development and of family dynamics and of education will be reflected in the program that is developed for the children. The teacher also must understand the child's development and also the theories of development. The main activity of the teacher is to understand the child. A teacher who understands the children's thinking also understands how to provide the structure and routines for the child to learn. So, these are some of the principles. So, let us now move on to see what are the guiding principles for planning early childhood education program. The first guideline is all young children are capable of learning. All children are, have the positive development outcomes. The preschool teacher should hold high expectations for all young children. Second guiding principle is the children show individual differences in development. Although the children develop skills and competences through a generally predictable sequence of milestones, they do not develop them in exactly the same way or exactly at the same time. Some children may have a developmental delay or a disability that requires individual expectations, experiences and materials. The knowledge of child growth and development is essential for program development. Decisions about appropriate curriculum for groups of children and for the individual child should be based on the knowledge of child development. Then the next principle is the children's language skills are the best predictors of academic success. The development of children's English language skills should be a major goal for preschool curriculum. Early childhood is a critical time in the development of vocabulary and other language skills. These skills provide a foundation for learning to read and write and for later academic achievement. Young children learn by doing. This is a very important guiding principle where the teacher should provide opportunities for the children to explore material, to engage in physical activities and also to interact with their peers. The next important guiding principle is that the families are the primary caregivers and educators of their young children. The program staff must give families the information they may need to support their child's learning development. So, these are some of the guiding principles when we are planning program for early childhood education or learning experiences. Now, let us move on to see what are the early childhood education principles for practicing. The first principle is the children are capable and competent and have been learning since birth. We should recognize that the children are competent learners and they can recognize they know they can do and use a starting point of new learning. Teachers support and encourage children as they learn by building on their prior knowledge. The next one is the children build up deep understanding when they learn through all the senses. The children develop complex cognitive structures when they are taking the information through all their senses including the touch, the kinesthetic, the smell and the children engage more enthusiastically in learning when they are able to participate in decision making about their own learning experiences. Children learn best through interactions, active exploration, experimentation and by representing their learning through a variety of modes. Children actively construct their knowledge by investigating new material ideas and events. Therefore, their learning must effectively through interactions with the people, concrete objects, ideas and representations which 
invite attention, exploration, manipulation and elaboration. And the next one is the children's positive dispositions to learning and to themselves as learners are essential for success in school and also beyond the school. The teachers have an important role in encouraging the children to develop dispositions such as perseverance, willingness to engage in new learning. The early childhood education programs are most effective when they recognize the value and build upon the culture and social experiences of the children. The children have diverse experiences in home, communities and early educational settings. The teachers collaborate with the parents to ensure that the learning environment reflects the ideas, values, beliefs and identities. Now let us see what are the developmentally appropriate activities in early childhood programs. Focus on health, nutrition and early psychosocial stimulation through free play and lot of adult child interactions. And for children from 3 to 4 years, the plan should be based on the all round development with more opportunities for free play continuous opportunities more free but some guided play by the adults and child to child interactions interactions with the play materials and environment through a variety of individual and small and large group activities can be planned when considering the activities for 4 to 6 years child moving towards the increasing ratio of adult guided versus the free play activities and more of large group activities for 4 to 5 years old should focus more on specific school readiness for 5 to 6 years old. Reading readiness, for example, picture sound matching, shapes and phonetics, increasing vocabulary, verbal expression, developing bond and interest in reading through picture book or storytelling can be considered. Writing readiness, eye hand coordination, interest in writing, and left to right directions can be considered. Motor development, fine motor development through activities such as beading, pegboards, puzzles, large muscle development like running, jumping, balancing activities, all these come under the motor development play activities. Creative and aesthetic appreciation, creative drama cultural activities, field trips all come under the creative aesthetic appreciation activities. So to sum up, today we have learned that learning and teaching process are complex. They are interconnected and occur inside the school and out of the school. The students and teachers are learners who are simultaneously a part of a number of interlinked groups and contexts which are affecting each other and a society as a large. The learning process involves active participation, innovation and creativity. It can transform all the learners and their potential to how they learn. The outcomes of learning process cannot be therefore be entirely predicted. The child construct knowledge when their minds are actively engaged in a meaningful shared interaction with the adults and peer group. Hope you have understood the lesson. Thank you.